Ambassador, putting the Arab Spring in proper historical context, should the Arab Spring seem as an unexpected phenomenon or a part of natural course of events in the region? I think it, it's both. I mean, it's entirely unexpected in its timing, but anyone could see it coming, but no one could anticipate when and what the scope was. I used to give le lectures on democracy in the Arab world and say there isn't any. But there's a reason for hope because the uh, Arab republics, the dictatorial governments, have lost control of the media. And what I didn't see was, I was thinking in vertical terms, you know, Al Jazeera, uh, television, satellite television. But what people didn't see coming, I certainly did, was the uh, media revolution in horizontal terms. That is the social media, YouTube and Twitter and all of these things. They have really changed the equation. So, you could see the trend coming, but you had no idea when and how big it would be, which surprised everyone. And you also mentioned that um, the Arabs, the Arabs admire us for our principles, but elements of anti-Americanism still exist in the region, if not oh, yes. growing. Why is this the case, and what can the United States do to improve our reputation and political capital in the Arab world? Well, there are many people who say, uh, we like your way of life in many aspects. Some say you've got too much, you're too uh, free, you're too tolerant of things. You can think of Arab society in a way as more Victorian, more like U.S. society up through the 50s or something. But they like the freedom, they like the principles. Uh, uh, interestingly, uh, the uh, cleric, Imam Faisal Abdurraouf, who is proposing the court of the center, interfaith center in New York, uh, has a book out and he says the best place in the world to practice Islam is the United States because our values as a country are closest in accordance with the egalitarianism of Islam. But there is plenty of anti-Americanism. People used to say, well, you don't know enough about the world, if, uh, about the Middle East. If you knew more, you'd be more sympathetic. Then people would say, well, we know you're misguided and you're not entirely uh, objective, but we think in the end you would still try to be fair. Now, uh, most people would say, you know, you're hopeless, you're just in the pocket of the Israelis. But we still like you as individuals and we like to go there and we like many of your ideas and institutions. But there is a hardcore, uh, these days it's a religious hardcore, who says we're we used to have the Antichrist, this is uh, the anti-Muslim. You're totally hostile to us, and uh, you're the far enemy. Uh, they went after, if you recall, uh, radicals like uh, Osama bin Laden originally went after their own rulers, then they shifted to the far enemy. So there is a small but very dangerous group who view us as the essential enemy and will use violence against us. But most people don't feel that way at all. They just feel that our behavior has shown that we are unwilling to be fair and that in crucial moments uh, we ignore their interests and their wishes and side with the Israelis. And many people just say, well, you're dominated by, <laughs> by the Jews. You know, that they have this kind of uh, conspiracy theory, you know, financiers, newspapers, and everything. So the, there is certainly anti-Semitism as well in places in the Arab world. Thank you, Ambassador. Oh, you're welcome.